This video will simply review the steps that were taken to produce the Swan Chair inside 3D Studio Max. You'll notice that I have my virtual studio set up just on two planes. All that was available were the two orthographic projections, no top view. It's sufficient to produce the outcome uh, that's desired. The geometry is comprised of this folded butterfly shape, and then there's a, a set of legs that are all extended out from a single um, cylinder that's extruded from the base. That cylinder also holds some sort of pneumatic uh, apparatus, so if we looked in here carefully we see there's a, actually a, a telescoping or um, change in the geometry at this location to account for adjusting the chair up and down or uh, for pneumatics. There is no cushion proper on the chair um, as originally designed, but uh, for the sake of the demonstration one was added here uh, just to cover how one might begin to build up pieces of upholstery off of a geometry like this. Uh, notice the virtual studio can be moved around so you know as you're building it might be a way to confirm yes my geometries are making sense with respect to the drawings that I have available and um, don't think that you have to leave them fixed in any one location. Um, you may need to take advantage of the graphite modeling tools. Those can be turned on by clicking on this tool up here, Open Graphic uh, Graphite Modeling Tools, and you will see uh, in the horizontal mask across the top a series of tools, and many of those are still available inside the uh, poly modeling um, modifiers over here on the right hand side of the screen. Okay, if I select the geometry um, that this is uh, eventually built out of, Let's, uh, let's zoom in here, and if you notice, there's a series of modifiers that are stacked up to achieve this outcome. Now originally, um, I started with a torus shape and decided I'm going to use just a piece of a torus to be able to produce this chair. Now an alternative way to approach it would be to lay out flat on the ground uh, approximately the butterfly shape that you see as a, a series of uh, uh, planes that are all welded and attached together, uh, but it seemed to me that this had a radius that was fairly close and it would just be a question of stripping off the polygons that I needed and then manipulating and shaping those into place. Now as long as this is still a torus object, I have access to all of its parameters so you can make adjustments here until you get to the state that you'd like it to be in. Now here on the right hand side I have a, a collapsed version of the final chair seat area, so we'll just ignore that for right now, and I want to look at the piece um, that still has all of the modifiers stacked up inside. So at the very base of this is an editable poly that was produced by using a piece of the torus. At the very top is a squeeze. So uh, at some point the geometry uh, needs to pinch in this area to correspond to actually how it looks inside, uh, or how it behaves inside the chair, and uh, this is something that can be adjusted until you get to match up with your orthographic views. So let's go ahead and turn the squeeze off right now. I want to point out that the squeeze is only applied in this area. It's not applied across the entire geometry, and you'll need to make adjustments to the amount of squeeze and the direction of the squeeze and so forth. Now, partly how you make adjustments to squeeze is to rotate the squeeze modifier around or reposition it. You'll notice um, if I open up the squeeze modifier and get onto its gizmo and slide it around that the squeezing is going to be repositioned as the squeeze modifier is relocated. But of course all the squeezing is radiating out from this selected set of polygons. Immediately below the squeeze is a mesh select. Now what that does is it allows just the portion of the mesh that's picked to have the squeeze applied to it. We are not applying the squeeze to the entire mesh, just the portion that's picked. Okay, so let's turn off the squeeze. You'll see this is the difference between squeeze and no squeeze. We turn it off, we move down to mesh select, and you see what has been selected here. Now, it's not just simply those polygons. Uh, we also have polygons on the reverse side of this. So that set of polygons, and in fact, uh, you might experiment. It might extend to an area um, a little bit more substantial than this. But um, you're trying to carefully do this. It's obviously a, a symmetrical chair, so we're trying to get a hold of the polygons um, symmetrically about this area. And this is done um, after we've done the symmetry, so it's way up in the stack. Um, it's not something we do below. We end up with a seam here or a crease. 
So also notice that this has a fall off to it. And if I roll out the soft selection of the interface, you'll see that um, I've uh, adjusted a fall off. So the impact of the squeeze is not just on a few polygons, but it slowly tapers off over, uh, over the length um, and width of the chair. Okay, so soft selection is on and I'm affecting back facing so all of the selected um, items um, are being squeezed in this area and slowly the squeeze dissipates until we get to this white area where the squeeze is not impact impacting it at all. I'll go ahead and turn that off and uh, below that we have a mesh smooth so once we move down in here it may ask us questions periodically like if you move down and make changes you realize that's going to affect the outcome further up the stack and and uh, yes, we know that's the case. So my mesh smooth um, allows my simple poly model to be smoothed off without me having to come in here and add rounding or fillets and any number of other things. I'm relying on NERMS mesh here, which is draped between a cage. Um, and in this case, the cage is a product of uh, a set of basic geometric moves. If I turn the mesh smooth off, you'll see what that really looks like beneath. This would be the equivalent of the cage for this model. And the smooth NERMS mesh is draped inside of this cage. Um, and we can make adjustments the amount of, of uh, rounding and smoothing that's around any of the edges or add creasing and so forth. Um, that just takes um, a little finesse and practice. And we're not necessarily going to cover that directly in here uh, in this video in order to speed it up. Uh, below that we have the shell. So if I turn that off, you'll notice that this is really at the base just simply a series of polygons and the shell is somewhat like um, an extrusion and uh, we get a constant offset here and this is capped off so it has dimension, a thickness to solid. Uh, it's printable in the end, that's part of the purpose of going this direction. Um, at the shell level you'll notice that um, I've extruded this in to the inside of the shell because I was uh, creating the model primarily um, from the outline I see in my orthographic projections which is on the outside uh, dimension so any extrusion I'm having come to the inside and based on the um, images that I have I was making the assumption that the thickness of this thing is approximately one and a half inches so let's turn the shell off and move down one level further. Now on top of shell we have the symmetry modifier. And the symmetry modifier might need to be um, flipped or the axes might need to be um, switched between um, X, Y, or Z. But I initially took a set of polygons here. If we turn this off, we're stripped right out of the torus. And then once I had a hold, got a hold of those polygons, then I pushed and pulled and repositioned uh, points and segments until um, I got the shape that roughly corresponds to what you see here. Um, and then the polygons that uh, were in this area, I just simply grabbed the points and pulled them over to what would be approximately one half of the chair. So the great benefit of the symmetry modifier is that you can build half the chair and have the other half produced for you in an automated fashion and um, the symmetry modifier also welds and joins the two together so in the end um, you have a nice clean closed geometry. So obviously way down at the bottom we have just our simple geometry and um, I mean, the way we get to that if we just would jump back over here to the torus is to collapse the torus into an edible poly and then you can begin um, removing portions of the poly model just simply by selecting and deleting um, polygons until you get um, just those polygons that you choose to make use of. And um, I'm not being terribly careful here, I'm just showing you um, how to get to that point. And then once you have the polygons you'd like, uh, then you can slowly grab vertices and segments and shape this and flatten it out and so forth. So that's how I arrived at this piece. And then of course, once we have that piece, then you slowly build up the complexity by adding each of these modifiers until we get to the outcome that we like. And finally we have our squeeze on the top, so that's how you do the chair. Um, in terms of the 
the base. This was all produced from a simple cylinder and then extrusions and offsets and insets and so forth uh, were added to it. And if I would uh, quickly reproduce that off here to the side, I could create a cylinder, we can extrude that, we can adjust you know, how many subdivisions we might want on this, um, how many sides. I think I determined that um, I wanted 16 sides so that uh, at every 90 degrees I'd have a flat facet that I would then extrude out to uh, perform the job of one of the legs. And we also want um, an inset and a telescoping geometry here at this end. So uh, one of the first things we'll do is collapse the cylinder into an editable poly. I'll grab the face on the top. Um, I'll come down here into my edit polygons and I can find the inset tool. Um, you can either manually inset by clicking on the larger button or you can numerically inset by checking settings. And uh, most of you are using 2011. And so uh, once you get to this point, your interface looks a little bit different than what I've got here. It all the, the controls and variables sit right off the cursor and you can make adjustments. So it's inset amount by group or by polygon. In this case, it's just one polygon pick. So I happen to think that's just fine for this particular example. And then I might proceed by having an extrude. We can also make adjustments to the height of that. Once again, these would be parked all right on the cursor or off the cursor um, in your versions. And then finally, um, uh, I want to make adjustments to um, this area at the bottom where my legs come. So I'm going to select just the points there. Notice I don't have ignore back facing on, so all of the points at that location have been picked. Oftentimes people find it easiest or best to do this in an orthographic view because then you can clearly see what you're selecting. I'll move these down so they're closer to uh, the base, so that's about where I want my legs to grow from. And then every fourth every fourth polygon I'm going to select a face and now they're all evenly spaced here and uh, we can confirm that by looking at different views and then we'll do a simple extrusion and we extrude this enough to get the height of the leg we want and then of course um, all of these things taper at the end so I'm going to get a hold of the vertices that are at the top edge of each of these faces and we'll lower them down slightly and the final part of this, the, the little um, feet pads at the bottom are just a series of cylinders and uh, we'd be expecting you guys to detail um, all of these things far more than uh, what I've done here but that gives you an idea of the process.